सभी को नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग वेलकम वी बीन एक्सप्लोरिंग विद इन ऑब्जर्विंग द सेल्फ एंड द बॉडी बाय द सेल्फ इन एक्सरसाइज टू एंड वी हैव कम अप टू द कंप्लीशन ऑफ स्टेप सिक्स वी लुक एट द स्टेप्स वी हैव डन सो फार सो हियर व्हाट वी हैव बीन लुकिंग एट दी स्टेप्स सो फार i am there i know that i exist i am there because i can see the activity is going on within me the body is also there i can observe the body is there how do i know that the body is there i observe the sensations in the body in step 2 we said that the exchange that is happening between the body and the self is only exchange of information nothing physical so i give some instruction to the body i read some sensation from the body in both cases there is exchange of information instruction is also an information sensation is also some information so the only thing that's happening between the two is exchange of information and we said i am the decision maker in step 3 we said i am the decision maker i am the one who's deciding the body is just following my instructions so if i am if i think i am hungry and the food is important at that time i give the instruction to the body to get up go to the table take the food put it in the mouth and so on if i think something else is important at that time even though few minutes back i read the sensation in the body and i called it hunger now because something else has come up which is more important i pay more attention to that and i decide to give instructions to the body for that whatever i think is important and the body follows so we'll see in everything i am the seer i am the doer i am the experiencer i am the one who's enjoying i am the one who decides what food is tasty and what is not for the body it just follows in step 4 we were trying to see the distance between myself and the sensation so when i read the sensation i am able to see that i am not the sensation neither am i in the sensation rather i can read this sensation from a distance so there is a distance between me and the sensation or the distance is there between me the self the consciousness and the sensation in the body the material body and this distance we'll come to it further finishing up with step step 6 in the assignment and taking your observation so if we go back now to the assignment part now in step 5 we were trying to see what kind of meaning we give to the sensations that we read and the sensations that we read may be in response to an event within the body or something outside the body if we look at events outside the body it could be related to other human beings or it could be related related to the environment now if it is related to another human being perhaps i am interacting with that human being or i am getting the sensation and by choice reading that sensation so i may be walking on the street many people are walking here and there one person is shouting i pay attention to that 
and I may not be paying any attention to other people moving around on the street. I am walking on the street. There is a lot of paper junk lying on the road. I do not pay attention to it. I see a 2000 rupee note lying there and I pay attention to that. So like that you will see in the environment also and in case of human beings also, behavior of the human beings. I read certain sensations that I think are important at that time. So which sensation I will pay attention to and read that depends on my sanskar, what I think is important, what I have acceptance for. And it may be different for different people. Once I read the sensation, I give some meaning to it. This also depends on my sanskar. So for a small child, the 2000 rupee note may be similar to the rest of the paper. No other meaning has been given. But if I see that, I give a different meaning to it. If there is a person who is shouting, one person may look at it as this person is going to attack me. This person is dangerous. I must try to avoid this person. Another person may look at it as this person is very uncomfortable within. This person is obviously in distress. This person needs help. The two, the condition is the same, the event is the same. How I perceive it, the meaning I give to it, that depends on my sanskar. And based on the meaning that I give it, if I don't have the right understanding and I don't have the right feeling within, I may choose to decide my feeling based on this event outside. And with that, I'm either happy or unhappy. If that feeling is in line with natural acceptance, I'm happy. If that feeling is not in line with natural acceptance, I am unhappy. So I respond or react. And if I don't have understanding, I'm reacting. We'll see that most of the time. But wherever I have some understanding, I may respond. So when I have completeness of right understanding, when my feeling is ensured within me, then with that comfortable feeling within, with that comfort with that feeling which is in line with the right understanding. I will be calm, I will be comfortable and I will respond to every situation without getting disturbed. But when I don't have the understanding, then it is not clear. Sometimes I may be happy, sometimes I may be unhappy depending on the meaning that I have given. And with all of this response or reaction inside, if I choose to express it outside, then I give that particular instruction to the body and the expression is visible outside. Same is true of events within the body. If there is some event in the body, there are many events in the body. I pay attention only to that which I think is important. And 
I give a certain meaning to it. Both of these points, you know, noticing, paying attention to the sensation and giving meaning depends on my sanskar. And with this meaning that I give, I can be happy or unhappy. I could have a feeling ensured within me based on understanding or I could be deciding my feeling based on the event that I'm paying attention to. And so, so I'm happy or unhappy. And then I'm responding or reacting within. And with that, I may choose to express it outside or I may decide not to express it outside. But the reaction is happening within me or the response. So whether I'm comfortable or uncomfortable, that is significant for me. So I need to pay attention to it. For that, I need to pay attention to the sanskar. Then in step six, we were trying to see this. If you can go back a couple of slides so that everybody can sort of have the, go back, go back. Yeah. So if my sanskar is based on some assumption without knowing, then I am not in that state of continuous happiness. I am not with the right feeling many a time. So I keep seeking happiness from outside, from the sensation, trying to get the right feeling from another person. And if I like the taste of the sensation or the feeling that I'm getting from the other, I become happy. This is a state of excitement because I can't sustain this. I can't continue with this. And I want to continue with this taste, but I'm not able to. I cling to it. I attach, I'm attached to it. I don't want to leave it. But when it's not there, because it's not up to me, when it's not there, then I crave it. Now that same thing, same sensation that I was clinging to because I thought it gave me happiness. Now the absence of that very sensation is leading to craving in me. And I'm suffering the unhappiness because it is not there. So can you see? The same thing that I thought was giving me happiness, when it is not there, that same thing is now the cause of my unhappiness. So this reaction is going on within. Of course, if I dislike that sensation, right? This is also because of my sense that now I am unhappy. This is also a reaction. Now I want to discontinue with that taste. I have an aversion of that. So if somebody is not expressing the right feeling for me, I avoid that person. I have an aversion for certain kinds of foods. So I decide against these emotions, these sensations which I think are unpleasant. So this reaction is going on within. I'm of course disturbed. And of course, if I want, if I decide to, if I choose to express this outside, I may do it. But the reaction has already happened within. The unhappiness within that disturbance within, I'm already experiencing, even before I choose to express it outside or not. Next slide. 
Yeah, we can go to the next slide. But if my sanskar is based on knowing, on right understanding, now with this right understanding, I have the right feeling. So I am comfortable. I am in harmony. I am happy. Now when I get this sensation from outside or from within the body, then I can rightly evaluate it and I can choose how to respond. And I will respond in a mutually fulfilling manner. I will see my role, my participation and respond accordingly. So if it is somebody shouting, I will notice that this feeling that the other is expressing is indicative of his state of being. That he doesn't have the right understanding. He is the one who is disturbed in pain. He is the one who needs help. So I don't have to get disturbed. Rather, I can help him if and when possible. But the first thing that happens here is I am not disturbed. So my happiness is ensured. Same is true of physiochemical changes in the environment. Same is true of the state of the body. I rightly evaluate all these sensations and choose to decide what to do with it, how to respond. Seeing my role, my participation, my responsibility in the relationship. And whether I choose to express it outside or not, again, is a choice I make through the body. So I continue to be in the state of happiness. And I am, whatever input I am getting from outside, I am evaluating that. While I'm evaluating, my feeling doesn't change. My feeling is ensured, it's definite. And with that right feeling, I can also see the relationship. I can see my role, my responsibility, whether it be the body, whether it be another human being, whether it be the rest of nature, whether it be the society. I can see what is my role. What do I need to do in that situation? So now I don't complain about others. I don't become unhappy. Rather, I am focused on what I need to do to help. So I choose to be mutually fulfilling. I choose to fulfill my responsibility in every situation. I am no longer clinging or avoiding. Rather, I am rightly evaluating and responding. So we had given this assignment yesterday to try and observe very sharply, deeply, so many activities that we keep doing. What is the thought process behind it? Why we are doing it? If we ask that question, we will notice some of the sanskars that are behind this. And once we observe the sanskars, if we notice that they are not in line with understanding, they will start becoming weaker. We don't have to react. We don't have to become uncomfortable. We can just observe what is happening. So we'll take your observations now. Namaste, Didi. <clears throat> like a... Uh... With respect to my observation, I have two things to ask. Uh, one thing is, uh, like, uh, after the day before yesterday, I was very tired after do, coming back from the office and on. So I was so tired that uh, I was feeling very sleepy and I was almost half asleep. Mm -hmm. So that time when my son came and said, like, we'll play cricket, like, I reacted saying that... Uh, because I wanted to sleep, mm -hmm. 
I reacted mm -hmm. saying that uh, you first complete your notes, then we'll play. Don't ask to, me to play until you complete your notes. So is it at this point, my query is like, I'm clinging to my body requirement. And because of that, I have given that reaction. Am I right uh, with respect to that perspective? And uh, like continuing the same activity, like, uh, like I slept off and uh, after 10, 15 minutes, because I have the habit of taking power naps. So after I wake, woke up, when I've seen like my son got anger and he bolted himself in the room. Mm -hmm. At that moment, uh, for momentarily, I was very tensed. I'd, like I got that fear once again, fear element. Then once again, like based on the morning session, fear is something with the self, not the body or something. With the sensation, I'm sensing that. And at that moment, I understood like instead of reacting, I should respond. So I tried to call him. He did not. He was not opening the door. So I just went into the kitchen, prepared a popcorn, and from the bottom of the door, like there's a gap between the door bottom. So I just after preparing, I pushed the popcorn. I said, "We'll have popcorn come out." And then he said he did not respond. Then I started putting two, three. Then my daughter was also there to support. Then he said, we are having popcorn, then we're having ice cream, then are you coming out? Then he said, I don't want this, I want to play cricket. And I said, okay, we'll play cricket, come out. So this was the situation, like he opened and we have discussed and we played. But uh, like, is it that uh, at that moment, from react, I have to, uh, moved to respond. But uh, while reacting, is it that my sanskar that uh, I'm giving importance to myself, my body, and then when the situation is arising, it's I can say it was almost out of control that I started responding. Is it right that I'm are my yeah. sanskar right? This yeah. is what I was having query. See, I won't even bring the body into it that much. Okay. Many a time you will notice that this tiredness <coughs> that you're feeling, uh, if you ask yourself the question, who is tired, uh, the body or the self? That answer you must see from within. See, okay. what happens a lot of times is, yes, the body, you know, has some limitations. It can only do so much during the day. Yes. But you will notice that many a time it's not that which is making us tired. What mm. is making us tired is that throughout the day there are so many conflicting thoughts in us. Okay. So okay. many times that our natural acceptance is for something but we are doing something else. Mm. Mm. Or we are thinking something else. Mm. And that conflict is going on. Should I do this? Should I do that? Should I and all of that conflict is leading to tiredness within me. Okay. I just want to sleep. Sleep also in the sense that you mentioned power nap. Yes. For those few minutes, you are at peace. Because now conflicting thoughts are not bothering you. Okay. Okay. That might be the reason. Mm -hmm. You can try to see it within yourself. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, true. It's and very how true. You are, how you are having this conflict and why you are having this conflict within when things, you know, you're not able to see your role, your participation. A mm. lot of times what is happening is, you know, I have this sanskar that or I have, you know, I don't have the feeling ensured in me and because, because I don't have the right understanding, I don't have the feeling ensured in me. So I'm trying to get the feeling from outside. Mm. So if I don't get that right feeling, or if I don't get that sensation that is important for me, then I get disturbed. A lot of times that may be the thing. Okay. And what sensation I am going to be disturbed with, what I pay attention to, what is important for me, that you will be able to notice 
from your sanskar but the sanskar is a little bit deeper layer initially mm-hmm. you may not be able to see all of it at least we can start with this that the mm-hmm. thoughts that are there mm-hmm. you know if i observe my thoughts if i observe my feeling you will notice when you have a feeling that is naturally acceptable and when you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable okay and whenever you have a feeling that is not naturally acceptable right mm. that feeling you have decided based on your sanskar but before you go up till that you have to be able to see your feeling mm. and then you can sort of trace it back to your sanskar so yeah. take it step at a time don't rush things mm-hmm. we are giving all of these steps because that information should be there with you then that work can take a whole lifetime or more than one lifetime yes yeah isn't it yes so it's not that because we have mentioned step 6 you have to be able to see step 6 otherwise something terrible is going to happen we will certainly make the effort mm. isn't it yeah yeah but we will not do uh, we will not react mm-hmm. we will not become uncomfortable like you mentioned you know the child locks locked himself in the room now you may have all kinds of fears this yes. child may do something but this is all your mm-hmm. sanskar this you are clinging to the child yeah. so it is disturbing you mm-hmm. you may not be rightly evaluating that whole situation and somewhere mm-hmm. you feel responsible because you reacted yes yeah <laughs> so all of this put together <laughs> is leading to all this anxiety and fear in you Mm. isn't it yes and so we focus on you know let's eat this let's do that but we don't talk to the child about how he felt mm. he felt hurt when you reacted yes he told that yeah. yeah yeah so children generally will be more open and we must listen to them if we don't listen to them then they stop telling us also okay isn't it yeah true so if you're listening they share mm. if you're not listening if you don't have time or you are telling them what to do but you are not ready to hear their side they stop sharing mm. then they look outside the house to their friends people that you know they think are willing to listen who will not judge who will not give orders or instruct but just listen mm. yeah. yeah so yes. all this we can now we can start talking to them being like a friend to them and there's nothing wrong in apologizing and saying sorry i was caught up with yeah. something else and it was not your fault uh, good morning didi <coughs> good morning co explorers uh, it is i'm just wanted to share what has happened on 26th evening regarding and i was attending a wedding reception uh, it was a skywalk uh, like preparation which was made for the entry for the grand entry for the wedding reception there uh, i was looking at the glitter and all that uh, which is there made so the concentration was not there so i slipped there, there on the glass so the ankle had a sprain and i had a fist so there was a pain 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 so i just sat there for 10 15 minutes and i was assessing how much is the damage that has gone into the body and just kept cool of myself and tried to check with the movement around how much pain is there and accordingly i finished the wedding and came back home and, and i was trying to go whether to go with some medication or to stay with the, uh, without that and there uh, my wife helped me with that wet cloth uh, around so that there should not be any swell and so with that understanding within that uh, that is uh, i can stay with it and not require any medicine 
so i was carefully handling for one or two days after that and third day it is almost nothing there i have no pain so the awareness towards the body how much it is being the, uh, the damage and accordingly taking a decision with understanding i think you can even avoid some of the medicines so that is what was my sharing is that is what was my experience with the uh, sensations that are going to get from the body ji certainly when we start observing we can observe this that yes. we are not that sensation rather we can be you know see our responsibility towards the body and do whatever is required namaste to all um ma'am yesterday i said that uh, whenever i feel angry i keep quiet i keep silence mm-hmm. uh, uh, this is the abs- hello yes yes ma'am am i am yeah. uh, actually um, uh, in the hostel due payment uh, so many parents are requesting they ask the time to pay the uh, fees Uh, but uh, uh, i cannot uh, give the time to pay the payment because it's already late and even though i told several times they are requesting uh, it is not in my hand and uh, there is a pressure from the higher authority i should i could i should not give that time also so i said sorry and uh, i kept my phone and uh, but by the time i feel my i uh, observe myself what is the feeling inside uh, i feel sad because the parents share their uh, uh, problems but i cannot help uh, so i cut the phone i kept quiet but in my uh, observe uh, sorry in my uh, feeling when i observe my feeling i feel sad because they have a problem that's why they are requesting but i could not help that is the thing uh, one thing and uh, another you may not be able to physically help yeah ma'am but at least we can have the right feeling and express our feeling even even i express ma'am because it's already 6 months uh, over because you have to pay the payment but still i have that feeling ma'am <laughs> i observe myself you know so what is the issue they are not allowed to pay or there is some late fees or what is it they have to pay that uh, due fees uh, fees due hostel due fees that, uh, but still they are asking the time to pay like a one month or two month later okay. uh, but we cannot give the time uh, that is the my situation uh, i explained everything Uh, this is so what my... is the consequence of they are not paying what happens uh, means uh, because the, this is the mid of the semester they have the, the students should take the examination to take an examination they need a admission ticket uh, because of the fees due we cannot we the no due certificate mm, that is the issue i cannot give the no due certificate uh, without payment so they are requesting to give the no due for the their daughter yeah, so see mm-hmm. in such situations what we can do is to try to preempt this condition mm-hmm. and keep sending the thing that this will be the consequence so you need to pay first mm-hmm. now see a lot of times we also are waiting to just say no to them i'm not saying for you personally i'm saying in general mm-hmm. for the authorities it is we have to have the fees and one way of ensuring that is don't allow the child to sit for the exam mm-hmm. so that the parent will pay the fees mm-hmm. but we don't say this in the beginning mm-hmm. and then when it is time for the exam there is lot of distress mm-hmm. suddenly it seems like you were quiet for 6 months you were tolerating it now what happened mm-hmm. <laughs> but see all of these situations today mm-hmm. things are not happening the way they should many things are not right in society many rules that we have made which are you know not seeing the relationship and so on mm-hmm. but what do i do about it mm-hmm. i can try to do this 
from my end help mm-hmm. out talk to the authorities say mm-hmm. that at least we should give them some time in the beginning mm-hmm. now when it comes to you know last minute now what do i do if you say again now we are reacting because we don't know what to do mm-hmm. and the situation is like this on the one hand we want to help the parent on the other hand we feel we have to do go by the rules mm-hmm. so with all of that now that confusion is there that mm-hmm. tussle is there that conflict is there mm-hmm. and that conflict is making us unhappy mm-hmm. but important thing to see is even here mm-hmm. you are not able to help mm-hmm. yeah. and you are in conflict yeah yeah does that help anyway yeah. you are not helping that person yeah, yeah. Yeah. now you are worse off because you yourself are unhappy mm-hmm. so i need not become disturbed and unhappy i can see that right now i can't do anything but for next time mm-hmm. i can certainly do something i can try to work it out mm-hmm. so that it doesn't come to this and we can talk to the authorities and do whatever it takes mm-hmm. discussions can be done something can be you know mm-hmm. that come to it Mm-hmm. but you see you have to see from both sides for the authorities also mm-hmm. if everybody is coming like that how do they run the mm-hmm. you know university there was yeah. a time in tradition when mm-hmm. knowledge mm-hmm. was never there was never a fee put for it mm-hmm. it was given free mm-hmm. that's yeah. a good situation that's how it should be Mm-hmm. health and education mm-hmm. were two domains where there was no fees mm-hmm. you gave what you could mm-hmm. but knowledge was imparted and for health you know mm-hmm. whatever was required was uh, tempted to be done mm-hmm. because this was something that is Uh, considered something that is important for every individual to have mm-hmm. but right now it may not be like this mm-hmm. so ultimately we have to work for the understanding of all mm-hmm. isn't it yeah. whatever we are imparting in the institutions mm-hmm. also is not understanding it is mm-hmm. information that we are imparting largely working for skills Mm. so many things are not right but mm. what do i do what mm. is my role mm. certainly i don't need to react i don't need to get disturbed mm. i do whatever i can do mm. and work towards helping change you know these changes to happen in society in whatever way i can mm. so i i focus on what is my role what can i do Mm-hmm. rather than you know if i am disturbed now i don't see my role also mm-hmm. isn't it yeah so that part we have to try to see for ourselves mm-hmm. one more thing ma'am uh, actually when i do the mistake myself that is uh, the mistake is from my side uh, 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 compared to the earlier uh, i i thought that uh, whenever for example i didn't uh, give that uh, tiffin at a right time to the family members uh, so day before yesterday it happened so i thought that where i do you the mistake uh, i give the more time for me only like that i thought and uh, uh, from uh, i decided uh, i rectify that uh, my problem and uh, Uh, that means uh, whatever the mistake i am doing i am seeing with the right understanding i try to uh, solve resolve that uh, problem my side uh, my from my side uh, this is how uh, uh, i that means uh, i feel unhappy by that time but uh, uh, later the thought process is going on where uh, what is my mistake what is the situation i analyze it and i rectify i resolve that problem from my side that is how i am doing that means uh, i want to 
say here i cannot uh, say that i i am not feeling unhappy i feel at that time but in a short duration i resolve it yes. uh, means i i uh, saw that the, my proposal uh, how i am doing what is the mistake i am doing like that yeah again you know right now we are focusing on the doing part mm -hmm. slowly we have to shift to before the doing what is going on within me mm -hmm. what are my thoughts what is my feeling mm -hmm. there the focus has to shift that is little more subtle than the doing the incidents mm -hmm. you see mm -hmm. yeah, so because we are so tuned to looking outside we look at what is happening mm -hmm. what i end up doing Mm -hmm. but remember that is just the expression yeah yeah before the expression happens through the body so much has happened inside mm -hmm. and i am not aware of it sure. and after the expression happens the incident happens mm -hmm. then i am realizing oh this happened mm -hmm. it shouldn't have mm -hmm. so if we could sort of work it out even before that Mm -hmm. by seeing the steps within mm -hmm. then we could make a lot of changes yeah ma'am you yeah. need not make those mistakes outside we need not have those incidents outside mm -hmm. rather we can have the right feeling within mm -hmm. at all times eventually mm -hmm. so we don't have the right understanding yet or we may not have the right understanding yet but that potential is there in each one of us and we can work towards it yeah ma'am but we have to pay attention inside so i would suggest you know maybe for 10 15 minutes every day try to pay attention inside try to observe your thoughts try to observe your feelings not at moments when you are disturbed only but mm -hmm. at some time when you are calm when you are comfortable when you don't have some pressing thing to be done outside when you have the time take mm -hmm. out 10 15 minutes and just sit down quietly and observe your thoughts your feelings initially you may not be able to observe that much but mm -hmm. keep sitting and doing this making this effort and slowly you are able to see more and more it's just about paying attention yes ma'am yeah? and doing nice thank you thank you good morning didi yes ma'am a uh, very short uh, question yes uh i met with a friend who is in the path of spiritual life we were discussing and uh, one thing what <clears throat> he told is uh, eating garlic is completely uh, very harmful to the person who is in the spiritual path is it so exactly when we are thinking scientifically well it is said to lead to more sort of um reaction more avesh what we call you no know, in hindi that um excitement those kind of things and it has also been shown that uh, it actually um is said to dull the nervous system in a way so that the very very subtle things that you want to try to observe it may interfere in that yes that much is there but if you look at the health of the body there may be many benefits and then how to decide it <laughs> benefit of the body and you have to make the choice based on whatever is important for you thank you didi thank you thank you very much <laughs> yes so we all make such choices and we can discuss it outside also but essentially yes those two opinions are there when it comes to the health of the body there may be many benefits when it comes to trying to observe more and more and more of the subtle reality there may be some hindrances yes and see this tradition keeps passing down so whenever you look at you know temples and all food has to be prepared they avoid onion and garlic you'll notice that yes yes they <laughs> but if you look at you know um health of the body 
many benefits are there and people are advised to take garlic so it depends where our you know the choice can be made it depends on where our focus is so we went through a little bit of this that so far whatever we have observed is i am there the body is there and only exchange of information is happening between the self and the body and in step 4 we briefly tried to see that there is some distance between me and the sensation and i can see that i can read the sensation that is taking place in any part of the body whenever i want whenever i choose to do so from a distance i can observe this sensation i can also see that this interaction is temporary it's not a continuous interaction i pay attention to the body only from time to time as and when required i am not paying attention to the body all the time in fact you will notice that so much of the time you are busy with yourself you are not even aware that the body is there because you are not reading any sensation from the body you are not paying attention to the sensation in the body so what we say you know that the self is what is significant the body is a tool this you can try to see directly also that you don't give it that much attention only when you need to get some information about the outside or when you want to express something to the outside then you use the body at other times you may not even be aware that the body is there so there is a distance between the self and the body and you decide when you want to pay attention to it when you don't want to pay attention to it and of course all the rest of it about you know what decisions we make as we discussed in step 5 step 6 those are two very important steps which are important to keep seeing in your day to day life in your everyday activities because that is what is deciding what i am paying attention to right what is important for me but ultimately to be able to see you know before we get to step 7 just to take note of this that this distance between the self and the body this we can try to see we may not be able to see it fully at this time and that is fine too but we can keep trying to pay attention ultimately that will be a preparation for the in step 7 also we are just barely bringing this up and perhaps we'll uh, discuss step 7 tomorrow but we'll try to observe this for a few minutes now that maybe just like 2 3 minutes that some distance is there between the self and the body and i am not paying attention to the sensation all the time i am observing it only from time to time even if you try to observe the body consistently for 2 minutes if we try to see any particular sensation in the body you may notice that at some time the imagination drifts and you are not aware of that sensation at all and then you come back to noticing the sensation does that happen you can mention in the chat
Are you able to see this? That sometimes, even when you are trying to focus on the body and trying to observe some sensation, sometimes the imagination just kind of drifts and you forget that you were watching the body sensation. And you don't even notice the sensation. Yes. So we can see that. We'll just, uh, we don't have much time. We have three minutes. So for two minutes, you can just uh, try to observe this sensation in the body. Just for two minutes, we'll do this and see what happens. And we'll come back in two minutes. So it's been just about that, barely two minutes. So we may be able to see this. Naveen Kumarji is sharing in the chat that you're able to see this when you're seeing a movie in the theater. Yes. And you will notice that much of the time, we are not aware of the body. It's not that you have to pay attention to a particular sensation. You are paying attention when you think it's important. So we'll observe this in some more depth today and we'll continue to look at our sanskars, continue to work with step five and six as before. And then tomorrow we'll discuss step seven. So we'll stop here now. Namaste.